class. My name is Karen Garrett. I'm going to be teaching you fundamentals of design again today. This is module two. So, again, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Bright Space. We're going to pull up module two, which is texture. At the top, you're going to see my lecture video, which is this. Watch that. And the support videos. And then it has instructions. Like I told you last week, there will be four assignments. This is assignment one. Uh-oh, what happened to assignment two? There it is. Here's assignment two, you're going to draw there. This is assignment three, you're going to draw here. And this is assignment four, you're going to draw here. Remember that you're going to take a photograph of each one on a vertical wall, not glass. You're going to show every edge. There's not going to be any shadows on the front, and they're going to be complete so that I can grade them. And you're going to submit them into Submit Homework Here dash Module 2. That way it's in my system. I can grade it and give you the feedback. Your feedback will be under Tools. Make sure to read that. And so at this point, you all have gotten my feedback and your grade for Module 1. If you love your grade, which I hope you do, then congratulations, move on to Module 2. If you don't love your grade, look at the steps because at the end of the week, um, well, actually it's the sixth, seventh day, then you can uh, revise according to my feedback for your Module 1 and then take another photograph correctly, put those in Module 1, and then I will know where to go, and I can give you a higher grade if you've worked on it. So that is the way it works. I hope you enjoyed it too, by the way. Now, we are going to start with assignment one. So let me pause. Okay, so this is texture assignment one. What I want you to do is start your assignments early, um, day one. Read everything. Day two, get for sure be started. Take your time and do a really good job. You're going to draw these below, obviously. And you're going to use pencils. So I have just some extra pencils. I may have 2B, 4B, you know, HB and 6B. If not, then you can do your best with that. But here's, what, here's how pencils work. A graphite pencil, this is a graphite pencil. This is a graphite pencil with wood. So to make graphite, they have to mix charcoal and clay. If you think about clay, it's mostly gray. So the more clay that is in mixed with the um, charcoal, the grayer your pencil will be. And so even if you press super hard, it won't be black. Now, this one, for example, you can have, it goes, the scale goes like this. This is HB. Okay, this is, that's kind of in the middle. Then you have, it's going to go B's this way and H's this way. You can go up to um, B10, which is the most charcoal, which is, the I call it the blackest, 10 blackest. But you'll have two, four, six, I'm going to turn this upside down. Eight, and then, you know, B. So that's how your your um, graph, your pencils will go in darkness. So you go this way, this is the darkest. Oops. Darkest, okay? And you go this direction, it's the same thing, except it's 2H. Okay, and it goes 4, 6, um, 8 and 10 H over here. I think of this as hard, meaning like it has more player work. Think of drawing with a pebble. You can't really, there's nothing that's coming off of it. Okay, so that's going to be the lightest. So going this direction, you're going to get super light. So even if you try to um, press really, really hard, remember it has more gray clay in it. This one has more black charcoal. So what you're trying to aim for is an HB, a 2B, maybe 4B and 6B. But if you have an HB, 4B, 10B, and maybe a 3H, that's fine. Is that right? Yeah. So um, 
just get a range. And if you don't, do your best with one pencil, please. Um, but be mindful that you're trying to get all the shades from white to black, so that'd be white, uh, light gray, gray, charcoal, and black. So if we look on here, obviously you would not do any graphite in the white area. Here, here, right in there, some in here, and here and on the face a little bit, right here. Okay, and then you're gonna go all the way to black. So there's some black here. There's black, and obviously the black background. This one stays more in the rain, the middle tone ranges. You've got a little white, but it really doesn't go too much black except right here. Some right there. Um, not too much in this one either. Every one of them don't have to have black. Okay, so black in here. Obviously you see black, and then right around in here. Okay, now if we, let's, we have to kind of squint. Squint your eyes, and you will be able to tell where the light gray, gray, and charcoal are. And start with your lightest when you're drawing, because you can always go darker. So if you squint, this gray is your light, light gray. Right here, you can see that's darker if you're squinting. So that's going to be gray. And then you squint, you can see that that gets darker, and that's charcoal. All right. It's nice and easy to see right here in this silky fabric. You have the white and the black. And for sure, this is charcoal. You can see that. Um, and it goes, and for squinting, uh, this would be gray. And this would be light gray for this one. Okay. Uh, you got a lot of light gray in this one. Uh, it goes from charcoal here, I guess, well, charcoal there and here. It goes into your gray and into your light grays. Okay, so now that you can see that, what you're trying to do is use the same five colors to create bristly texture, hard texture, rough, smooth, and say it, texture, soft texture, silky texture, furry texture, and wet texture. There are no tests and quizzes in this class, but I'm expecting you to be mindful since this matters so much to your career in the arts and in design. So every time you're drawing bristly texture, think to yourself, I'm drawing bristly texture. And it'll, it'll stick in your mind a lot longer. Okay, so, what I'm going to do, I've gotten some little gadgets. Some of you are architects, and you know, for circles like that, uh, I have a jar that I can. I'll show you how I work with that. So my opinion is that everything is an art supply, and so just look around, see what you need, and you can always use some um, any kind of tools you can find. All right. Now, we're not going to go with, where's my, we're not going to go with the markers for this one. None of that. Okay, this is going to be smearing and smudging and, and being um, kind of uh, free. Remember the loops that we did last week? Okay, so, and I have a little stub. This is called a stub. What you can do with that is... And that's super grainy, so that's a grainy texture. I'm going to take my little paper stud, smooth it out if I want to. So that's less grainy. Grainy may be what you would want, but maybe it's not. So you can either roll up a piece of paper on your own, like a piece of newsprint, and tape it. Um, just cut it at an angle, and when you roll it, it'll, it'll start to build a point. So I was just showing you with that. All right. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to start with, you can, you can either draw it, cut it in half like that, make it easier on yourself. And so see that wasn't quite right. Use your wrist and don't be lazy. Make sure you're trying to do a good job. There you go. That's better. 
So at this point, I can't quite see my line through the middle right here, so I'm going to use my marker for that. Okay. All right, so at this point, this circle is kind of on the edge of this point. It goes, does not quite touch the top here. It's a little bit ovular. Okay, so I got that one in. And this one touches this line and almost the edge. Kind of comes to about right here. You can even go like that. You can watch TV while you do this. You can talk to friends. Um, enjoy your life. It's peaceful. Drawing is good for you. So this little piece doesn't quite touch. It's a little above the middle. You don't have to isolate yourself um, when you draw. You can just sit outside. It's a nice day. You can invite friends over and let them cook for you or something. So here we go. We're going to come down with this piece. This is fun. We're in art school. And our school is fun. It's healthy for us. It's going to make you great. Okay, and it'll make you money too one day. So let's be let's be really, really good at everything we try to do. And if you say to yourself, well, you know, I'm going to be in um, photography. Well, this, yeah, okay. So you may not have to draw with your hand eventually with that, but, or music, but still you can translate every single thing from this class into everything you do with the arts from now on. Okay, see that didn't take very long. It was fun. So now, what are we working with? Bristly texture. So, these little pieces are going to be the fun part because you can just see the, the spikes. I don't want to see, see, I don't want to see, I know and you know that they stick off like that, but that's not exactly how they look. So, I don't want to see that, okay? A bad little kid son. Please don't do that. We're, we're looking at the spaces and we're going to, so let's start the, with the um, diagonal lines of how they grow. And if you, uh, if you look at plants when you go outside, just the, so miraculous how cool they are and um, how they grow. So kind of bond with that and then there's the lines that go this way. See how I'm curving it slightly so it makes that look round? All right, so now here we are. At some point before I finish this out, I'm going to have to get rid of my grid. That was only to help me get everything where it needs to be. Okay, so please make it look really nice. Okay, so now at this point, you're going to go, okay, i got to leave some whites so in there. I'm going to just... Do my little black. Leave some more little black in there. I'm going to leave some white because I know that those are little spaces where the white um, thorn sticks out. And when I get to this edge, I know that they're sticking off right there. So I'm going to, I'm going to make myself places where it's going to stay white. And I'm not making a little kid sun, right? Okay, so we're here. And then I can start doing the charcoal. So this is black and this is more of a charcoal. So I'm not going to go as dark. But I'm going to um, fill that in to start establishing where my, my bristle texture, my little thorns are. And I said to myself, okay, that is starting to come around. I'm really liking this. But it's too, um, too many, 
scribble marks. Remember how we did scribbles last time? Okay, not, we don't want scribbly. So you can either take your finger and do it like that, but it's harder. You can take a spear or a piece of paper and do that. A stub, make yourself a stub. See, isn't this nice? And sometimes it'll just have the junk on it and you can keep working with it. So this is how you're going to create this one. And you're going to keep going, like for example, with this white that sticks off. Let's establish where that is. I'm going to establish where this one is too. And the other one's back there. And then again, we'll go um, some of these little pieces that come off the, the thorns and, and back again to the charcoal. So this is how you're going to do that. It didn't take very long. It's nice um, and beautiful. All right. So this is how you're going to do all of these. If you want to do a circle, you can always trace it. You say, well, that's too big. I know. And you say, oh, well, all right. So what about this one? I'm going to center that. That one might actually be better, right? But you can find it if you sew, you can get a spool. Um, you can look around in your kitchen, caps of some sort. And, you know, just find something that you can trace around if it's going to be a nice circle because we don't, we don't want, on this one, it's rough. And so at first, we don't want to do that. Yes, I know it's rough. That's a dashed line. Remember how we did dashed lines last week? Okay, so start off with a nice smooth circle. Let's go here. Start off with a nice smooth circle, and then we can work the edges. Okay, so how we want to, to make it, to take it back to rough. And you have a pencil. So in this one, if you squint, you can see that the whole side is, can you see that that's gray? And then this is, the center's kind of light gray, and this all is really light gray. Um, so what you can do is start off with the edge. So let's, let's just kind of roughen it up. We're doing, doing a rough texture, right? And then you're going to keep, let's see, once you've gotten, let's say, we do this edge. I'm going to help you with that. So then I'm going to use the side of my pencil so that we can make this into a round object. I haven't fixed this side yet, so I'm just going to work with it right here for a second. So can you see that right there? It's a little darker down here. Oops, getting a little bit too tough. Okay, so now I'm gonna lighten my hand up, lifting the pencil lightly to get that light color. And then it's like, ooh, be careful, careful. In fact, I might wanna use my stub again, and I'm gonna kind of rub it dark. If you want to clean it off, uh, just get a piece of paper. Doesn't have too much on it. Clean it off like that. Keep going lightly. Rub it off, and then we are light. Okay, so now that does not look rough, does it? So now we're going to go back with our eraser. I'm going to erase back some of these light places. I'm not 
about drawing perfect circles in here that look like dots. So see how that's how nice that's becoming. Some of these are a little bit lines. So you know, be an artist. This is being creative. It's fun. It's good for your brain. You know, to come all the way over here into your creative side of your brain and just enjoy making rough texture. Next time you see rough texture out in the world, you know how much more you're going to really appreciate it. I promise you will, because I do. And you're going to keep going. That's how you do it. All right, so each one of these is going to have their own personality, but the techniques that I taught you here in both of these, you can use on the rest of this. And I hope you really will enjoy doing that. I enjoyed this, and I kind of want to finish it, but that's nice. It was fun. And oh, and don't forget the background. See, this is a light gray. Um, I'll get my stub and just, just stub it with what's dirty on there. Because when you did that, look what happened. It makes the white even whiter and more beautiful. So let's finish our pieces. And this one will be all finished out too. Like it's a little drawing, perfect drawing. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this is assignment two. So this will be the next day. You're gonna start this one. You don't expect to do everything all the same in the same um, day because you, you won't put your heart into it. And I really want you to enjoy this and put your heart into it. Okay, so what does it say to do? On this paper here, we're going to use graphite pencils again. So here's our pencils. I'm gonna put my little stuff up there too. Create a pleasing composition and draw balls using all of the texture styles from assignment one. Okay, so you now know how to do assignment one. We've done them all and they're completed. So what we're looking for is for sure eight balls because you're gonna have to have bristly texture, hard texture, rough texture, smooth texture, soft texture, silky texture, furry texture, wet texture. Okay, now let's talk about that. These, these pictures are just beautiful, I think. Um, this is really nice. Uh, when you're all finished, this is mostly ink. You're going to use the pencils like we did on the assignment one. But you might want to think about doing a color in the background. That's up to you. But it will have to have a gray if you don't have a color. Okay, so let's talk about the balls. Okay, let's just look at the balls for a second. These balls have... Um, the texture so that it's indented where they're cut into or um, they're, if they're lumpy, they're not quite round. These little metal circles, they stick off. Over here, it goes out, out, because it's rope. Um, these were stone, so they're perfectly smooth on the edges. But remember, we're gonna be doing eight different textures, so it's more like this. And I, what I'm trying to tell you is, don't quite look at this one. It, they make their edges too round and perfect, like they're all stone and they're not. So this is the only ball here that kind of goes um, furry on the edges. So, but I hope you can see what I'm talking about. When you do your balls, let me get my jar. You can get all of your, um, just find round stuff in your house. Okay, and they get, it'll be a lot nicer if you have different sizes. And some behind each other, in front of each other. Or you can just do them, we'll talk about composition yet. Okay, so there you have it. Let's go back to our texture. If we're doing, let's say, bristly, we've already talked about that, then you're going to, do, 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 do. you might as well just use what you already know, make it round. And then um, around again. You've already done this. Just go with what you've already learned here. And then you're going to put the black in like we did. Black in like we did. And then it starts to be charcoal. It's harder to show that with, a, with this. I want to use 
patching lines to get me a gray. I'm going to get them farther apart to get a lighter color just for now. But you know that you're going to be using pencils and you know how to do it. And then at some point, you know, you're going to erase and have these textural pieces come out. And remember, we have the side pieces. So we're going to erase that. And so just use that as the, the way to do this. If you're going to do, um, let's say, the shell or the hard surface, why not just do it similar to the, to the lumpy, little lumpy right there. You can come here and even just try to make it like the shell even would be fine. We're going to start with the spiral. Okay, and then we can make the spiral lumpy and bumpy. And it comes off the side. So isn't this fun? I think it is. It's very relaxing. And you can even make some longer ones. So that's still a ball. And I'm going to uh, translate, obviously, with, with um, cross-hatch lines to give it some shadow and shade. But you're going to use your pencils, like we already talked about. Now, um, that's what we're going to do for this assignment. So let's look at the compositions. Let's talk about composition for a second. We're talking, this is all texture, but in design, fundamentals of design, composition is huge. This one, it fills up the entire space. You have large, medium-sized, small, and extra small. There's another one right there. Oh, and this is even smaller. Okay, in this one, you have the balls, and then you have ovals. So that's a mixture of shapes. So you might, and the squares. Um, if you want to do that kind of idea, you can texture your bases. This is wood. You can make it wood grain if you would like, or you can do something else that's textural for you. But again, I don't want the edges to be smooth. And remember, you're going to definitely have to have eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you'll need one more. This one has a whole lot. Um, so you may want to just go, like you would zoom in and have, let's see, let's just block it off. So then now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But you see what I'm saying? You can cut the composition or expand the composition if you want to. Um, this one has a nice little background to it with a pattern. We'll talk about patterns another day. But one, two, three, four, five, and then you could go six, seven, eight, and then add some sort of a, well, you could even do your silky back here if you want to do the silky cloth here, and then do seven balls like that. Okay, same thing here. We would have to crop. So, uh, let's see. So there's eight balls, and the composition is um, really planned to be repetitive. And the only difference you're going to have is the color, which make, we'll talk about emphasis and dominance another day. But you can, if you like that kind of a very balanced uh, composition, that's fine with me. So you get to choose. This is how you become creative. So in this rectangle, I want you to be creative. Creative. Now this is a bigger space than we were using to draw here, so this is, you're going to learn how to create a whole space, and it really has to be finished out all the way to the edges. So you're going to have. I want. You, what I would do um, is I would start off. Since we're going to do composition, let's say this is my rectangle. So that is this. You could. 
you can either make some samples, you know, like there's one, there's one, and let's, you could do four or five or six, whatever you want to do. You could, um, say, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or what if I say, I don't like that. One, two, And then I say to myself, hmm, none of those go off the space. They're just hovering in there. This touches this one, but none of them touch each other. This one's overlapping and it goes out of the space. So you're talking to yourself. What do I like? Which one do I like better? And then if you don't like either one of them, what do you do? Just get another sample and then do what you want to do. Okay, I think I might want to just do them all this big and in the corner that's it and just leave the inside up one two three four five six seven oh I mean one in the middle do I like that so just play with it to figure out what you want before you go in here and do it because once you get it once you draw on your paper it mars up your paper and you want to definitely make this beautiful okay that's lesson two Okay, this is texture assignment number three. This is cardboard. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to be using our pencils and your little stub or your finger, and we are going to draw cardboard. Now, sometimes I get what I'm about to do, which is no good. So, okay, yes, I see that, but people will just make a rectangle. And then they'll just go messy like that. Please don't do that. Okay. So let's think about cardboard. Yes, it, it does have lines in it. Some are charcoal, some are gray, some are light gray, and some are very light gray. And then we've got the white. Okay, and then, so since we're talking about texture, this texture, the smooth side, is different than the broken ends, right? And so think back to your textures and from here and think back to trying to make the edges rough here, I mean rough here and uh, bristly there. So what we want to do is create cardboard. It's beautiful. It's interesting. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's do this again where I'm going to take my, my marker. So that's about six and a half, so three and a quarter. I'm making myself a little graph. Since I did center this when I was creating this page, I know that that's centered. You might as well just go with it. There, lightly, not very dark. Don't don't press hard because it won't rest. Okay, so this is four. So we're gonna do obviously half of that. It's two and two. So this one's going to be two and an eighth because it's a bigger square. I mean, bigger rectangle. Two and an eighth. Lightly. Okay, I'm going to do this again. So we know that that is three and a fourth. So one and a half. And one and five. One and let's see, three. So one and a half. One and five eighths. So you're going to make a 
8, 1, 5, 8, 2, 2, 1, 8, 2, 8, 3, 4, 5, 8. That one's bigger, so. 1 and 5 eighths. I made the squares bigger because I do have some very, 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 I don't know. I have students who sometimes want to copy this and lay it under and trace it, and that defeats the whole purpose, so let's not do that. It won't be the same size. I made them separate and different sizes for that purpose. So please go this way with me. If you are doing the assignments every single day, one assignment per day, then you will have plenty of time to finish everything correctly and be proud of yourself. So one and a half, and then one, two, three sixteenths. So one and a half and three sixteenths. One, two, three. Okay. So, draw that in. That should be enough. I mean, we could, you can make more of a graph if you want to. And all you have to do is just um, keep dividing if you want. So, at this point, we're going to start here in the top corner. This corner, so that's the half mark right here. This is above it, about like that. And then you're going to come around. It has a little bit of a curve. There we go. That's this little, this little piece right here. Now we've got that little curve coming off of it. And where's it? Yeah, that's a slight curve. And then, okay, here, it's here's the middle. There's a fourth of it. And there's a fourth of it. So it's a little over the side there, right here. Trying to make a curve. It's kind of a circle in the back, it looks like. Okay. And so now we're going to go here's the half mark or so there. So there's a half, and it's kind of rough, straight. That's a little cut there. Come across. This is jagged. Um, Got a nice little piece there. So basically you're making a diagonal towards the corner. And that's a little high. No big deal, just to erase it. And then you've got cardboard, kind of a curvy situation here. And this one's broken. So you can see how fast that goes. Don't think too hard about it. Put some music on. Um, you know, get your kids a little game to play. Pet your dog and then tell them you're busy for a little bit. Watch some TV. You know, get some water. And just sit down and, and work on this. It won't take you that long. That took me a maybe a minute or two. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 minutes. And now we're gonna shade. So here we go, that's squint. This is black, charcoal, gray, light gray, and we're gonna call this sort of a white. I would start off with my blackest places first, and I would use kind of the side of my pencil. I'm just going to focus on this one corner to show you how to do it. Okay, the black comes down. So, a lot of times, I think our minds go running away with us. So, people will look at a drawing like this and they'll say, oh, that's so hard. But what they're really saying is, I didn't plan my week well, so I don't have time enough to do a good job. That's why I have the time on task for you to do so that you can have everything done because I'm lighting up now because this is kind of a middle tone gray so I'm going to lighten up my hand. I'm going all the way to the edges. It's a little lighter there but not totally white. And 
this is dark too, but not as dark as that. Same thing here. Okay, and now for this piece, we're going to do the lines. So what I'm saying is, let's go back to the point. The point is that people say, well, I don't want to spend that much time doing that. Well, you need to commit it to memory. And I promise you, if you do this, you will appreciate cardboard so much more. Not only that, you will really like yourself. Because you'll say, I love that. You know, I, I really love that. See, so, you know, we're looking at the lines. And it's a little bit of a gray. It's right there. So please, please, please. I know you have other classes. But please um, put the, this, make this important to you, okay? So that's done. Now let's go back to black. It's charcoal. Black. And we're going to leave this little white line. Okay, so now it's getting even lighter here, so I'm going to leave that alone. Oh, yay, we're back to this again. I love it. Okay, not everywhere. Not everywhere. So now at this point, I'm going to get my stub. I'm going to leave some of it rough, and I'm going to smooth out some of it. So not everything is going to get smoothed, because um, I want to keep a little bit of that rough texture in places. But up here, for sure, I'm going to try to smooth some of that out. Don't just go because it'll become one color. This is 
a nice little square to look at. Uh, the rope is nice. Um, that could be your shell, but again, let's not just let's not do this because of this with the edges being flat. So you know what you're doing. You now want to do what are we doing this week? We're calling it texture. That is the fundamental of design that you are going to use from now on is texture. So I'm going to leave that up to you. What I would do at first is just go to um, font, find your five letter word, go to, to font, figure out which font you would like. See, this font would be different than this. This font is different than this. So find some fonts that you enjoy. And again, we're going to go back to our doodly, doodly board here. And we're going to say, OK. So K is going to be my uh, first one. And I'm, now I'm going to say wood. Well, wood doesn't necessarily do this, right? Ribbon does that. So I'm going to be looking for straight lines and how you have to visualize how would you create a letter out of wood if it's real. So they nailed it together. So you've got some nails here. There's some shadows that show that this one's under this one, that one's on top, and that one's way on top. So think to yourself, don't just go, um, okay, wood, like that, and then go wood, wood, because that goes back to being continuous line, and it's not near as interesting as this, where the wood is actually nailed together and on top of each other right with a little shadow here so we also want to think about with the metal look at all those shades of gray in there it's really nice um, and you're going to be using gray so the gray the gray scale again so um, squint and or if you can even uh, maybe change that into gray so that it helps you but remember back to uh, this one you did water what can you do with water I like the way they did this one because it doesn't have an edge at all. See how the rectangle here has an edge, so it defines the space which you were going to do here. But what's nice about this is that they did not define the water. They're going to let it feel like it could ever, the little droplets could flow away. Notice that the edge of the stones, think about building a stone in, okay? Chopping your own, um, carving your own uh, stone pieces, putting them on top of each other. They would have gaps on the edges there. So we're not going to go back here and go, okay, this is a stone, it's a stone, it's a stone. Well, what about the edges, you know? What about where the, the stone has to come in and make its own piece, and then that one rests on it? See what I mean? And it's not flat, flat, flat. It has, we, we have to draw a stone. So what I did was I looked up my name in different textures. I say K in wood, A in metal. And I did like that. You can easily do that, or you can go to font, figure out a font that feels like ribbon or feels like you can do water or texture or rough, silky, furry, soft, whatever. So um, there's different ways of going about it. Now, you don't have to have them all the same size. I did in my example here, but you could make them um, go off the out of the rectangle like you did the balls. You know, it could be could be this is gonna be my K piece of wood. And that one goes over it. And then this K is gonna be I'm gonna nail it there. I'm going to have to make it thick, like a piece of wood. I'm giving myself some dimension here. It just depends on your skill level, um, how creative you want to be with that. And then, then, after I do that, then I'm going to come back in with my wood grain. But that's my abstract K. And then the A could be something behind that. You can really play with it. 
Um, and I, I hope you will. So I like the balls when you know they were perfectly aligned. You can do letters like that, or you can be more creative. So that I'm going to leave up to you. You obviously know how to do texture now. So I'm going to go ahead and um, move on to um, saying goodbye. I'm to enjoy this week. It's module two on texture. I will see you next time. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.